everybody. Welcome back to The Breakdown. This is episode eight, nine. I don't know. I've lost track. I think it's episode eight. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Ron Humison, sitting down with, let's just throw back to last season, uh, Pasta, the Aww. good vicar, the myth, the man, the legend, the I'm one out. in Bye. once and for all. <laughs> Walking out. I'm Lead done. pastor, the guy, Whatever. statue of David Nick Pierce. <laughs> I tried to get them all in. It's too much I could say right there. <laughs> too much. Um, I don't know the episode. I just know the season. All I know is season three. Nick just walks in. I was like, I don't even know where I'm. Just ask me some I questions. No it's Do, really pretty much true. Uh, especially after the last week and a half that we've had coming post-Easter. Oh, was that a busy week? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was a busy week. It was yeah. an abnormally busy. And then at the same time, those are the times where it's just like, it was just another week the thing that stood out to me that made it so different was like my brain felt like mush. Yeah. Like I remember sitting at home Saturday, like London's trying to ask me questions and I'm, she's like, where are you? He was, and I was drooling. Like, I have he had no his, idea. Like, he was gone. <laughs> I was checked out. So the thing that I've been challenged with when, cause like we got the question, how many times did people come up? Mm -hmm. oh, busy week, busy week. That's and without ministry. trying to be sarcastic, <laughs> you want to respond. And, uh, and I forgot where I heard this from. It could have been anywhere, but Instead of saying, oh, I got a busy week, it's a building week. Oh, I like that. You know, like we're, it's Kingdom Impact, or it's Kingdom Before Calvary, like we're, it, it should be busy. Mm -hmm. Like, but just because you're busy doesn't mean you're fruitful. Doesn't mean mm -hmm. you're effective. Yep. Doesn't mean you're doing the right things. And you may feel like we've had this conversation and it drives me up the wall. Yeah. You can say, oh, my, my <clears throat> day was just so busy. Well, what did you do? And then when yeah. they start processing through it, like, well, I, you know, I worry. It's like, so your day wasn't that busy. Yeah. You just didn't feel productive yeah. or, you know, it's like that doesn't mean anything. And that's what I think a lot of times you're being more reactive than you are proactive to your day. Like if you're just letting mm. the day run, it's like, no, no, no. Like we, yeah, I we run leave, the day. Yes. I Not the day the, runs yeah, me. Carpe diem. We <laughs> seize the day. So I've been trying to say like, it's, it's Holy week. It's a building week. Like that's a, that's a week where we put a lot of emphasis we put a lot of effort. We put a lot of everything to it uh, because of the meaning of it. And so it should be. It, but it needs to be more than just busy. Yeah. Busy's not good. But are we building? Are we being yeah. fruitful? Are we being effective? And so. And, and then that's the thing. Like, like you said, you could have a really busy week or not a busy week. But, man, if we're not building, even if it's just some bricks, we're doing like improving something. Being effective. It, yeah, yeah. If we're not. Yeah. That's, that's when it would be a concern to me. So. Yeah. It's a building week. It's uh, so let's because I know people have asked or have wondered. Yeah. So you at the end of Sunday, at the end of Sunday, a little bit after because you you and your family did an extra service. You guys we, had done twelve services. Yeah, we ended up going to the nursing home and we did a small service there. Yep. And my older kids actually led in worship. And then Sweet. I just it was so fun because I recapped the message. Yep, did it in a shorter condensed thing. Um, didn't even need to look at my notes. Like just, just like after after five I Sunday see. morning, just went there and it was like, doom, I could doom, doom, the, yeah. yeah, like I didn't even I didn't even have my iPad on. Yeah, so we did three services our normal Sunday, Palm Sunday last week. So we did Palm Sunday, three we did, normals. We did three services during the week: uh, Road Monday. Resurrection Monday, yep. uh, Passover and Prayer Wednesday, yep. and then our normal Good Friday service. Yep. And then we did five services for Easter. Mm -hmm. If I heard once, <clears throat> I heard close to a million times. <laughs> I don't know how you guys have done it. I don't know how you guys do it. I'm like, we had like 15 and a half minutes in between each service. Yeah. You don't have time to be tired. You now, don't. when I knew you ended the last service, the last 15 minutes were absolute torture because I could just feel my body getting more and more tired. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not looking forward to anything. Yeah. I'm looking forward to going home and crashing. Yeah. yeah. And so, I've, you know, in the last two days, I've had people like, so uh, are you going to take a day off? I was like, no, it's a work week. Like, I got stuff to do. <laughs> we had a, a board member, but also, you know, I would just say a good friend, good encourager. And he texted me after the first service, the 630 service on Easter morning. And he said um, a few things. But one of the things that he <laughs> said, he said a few. Um, don't count down mm. the number of services you have left. Count up, up. the number of opportunities you have left to share. So all I did word. all morning was count down. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I closed all Four the services. More, I'd high five all the worship team. I was like, one down, yeah. four to go. Four down three, like the homework. And we're used to that. We're used to saying like, oh, we only got four more. We only have three more. We only have two more, yep. you know, but what if you did it the other way? Like, and sometimes like 
you know, that one proverbial question, like, would you want to know the day that you're going to die? Yes. You would? A hundred percent. Really? hundred percent. No question. So like, then, then would you count down the days to your death or would you count up and say, I have seven days left? I'd probably count down pour, just because that's I mean? like normal. Yeah, that's you know. how people do it. But it's like, you know what? I'm going to count up. I have three days left to yep. do this. I have one day left or whatever. So I wouldn't want to know. I can't believe you would say that. I want to know only because this is the morbid part of me. Death doesn't scare me. Yeah, like, I'm not afraid to die. The the big challenge thing, accepted. What no. I what I would be. <laughs> okay, guy, <laughs> slow your roll. I'm not First, asking to be killed. Don't nobody really do it, <laughs> but just act like you're going to, and let's see his response. The rest I want of the two see. weeks, I'm like. Yeah. All right, if you're gonna, I'm, I'm the process of how it's gonna go. Like, no, I, no, I don't want to drown. I'll say that right now. Like that. There's thought, two ways I don't want to die. What's that? Drowning and be like catching fire, or being oh, locked in fire. Same ones. Now I've heard. I don't know who's saying this because they've yeah. through, but I've heard <laughs> what it happened to me. This <laughs> drowning is isn't that bad. And I'm like, no, no, that it's pretty. We, bad. we, we. Uh, what? Yeah, I have no. Anyways, back to morbid. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what we're talking. Oh, I know. I'm more of like death doesn't scare me. What does scare me is if I were to die young, Mm. like making my wife explain that to my girls where we like we're in that stage where are we like if something happened to you right now, like you would be photos and videos and memories to to Blakely, our youngest, who's one. Yeah. Layton has memories. She knows. She knows I'm daddy. Yeah. But we live in the. But once she turns 22. She knows. Yeah. Would she remember? She's probably not gonna remember. You know, she'll have those pictures of like, oh yeah, you know, who's this spiky haired dude holding me around yeah. the Christmas tree? It's a, but so that's like for yeah. me, it if I looked and like, oh, I know that that number is sixty years from now. Yeah, cool. Like yeah. I'm probably not gonna really think about it again. But if that number's four years from now, oh, I'm telling you right now, that's the, hard. the language that I'm using. Like right now, we're in a Daniel Tiger face, and so grown ups come back. Our oldest sings that all the time that she's scared. She'll like we pick her up from daycare. Yeah. And she will run in my arms, go, Daddy, Daddy, grown ups come back. And she'll do that. And it's like listen, first time on the breakdown right there. Vocals. Um, yeah, we're not gonna sing in. I've said same way. I mean, I think we still do that with our eight, nine, nine. How old's my youngest? Nine. 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 Yeah. Nine. We just had birthdays, we okay. Had, we gotta I gotta run through all four of them in like <laughs> 18, 16. Yeah, okay. Um but like yeah. I told London the other day, I said, hey, I don't like, I love that, but I don't know we're but doing what ourselves. If, yeah. Like how do we what if say, she comes home? daddy, daddy didn't come home, Yeah, but daddy always promised he was going to come home. Now, hopefully mm-hmm. she'd outgrow that. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't want to live but in with that moment. Right good there, grief. I just lying to your kid. If I see five years from now, I'd be like, hey, that's done. Like, Just we, start telling her this, like grownups come back. Or daddy goes to heaven. <laughs> That's they'd be like. So she's not. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, come on, guy. If you don't know by now, we got to talk here. Listen, blessed I, assurance is the yeah. hymn. Come Jesus on. Jesus is mine, but assurance, <laughs> like blessed hope. <laughs> Jesus is mine. That's what we're going for. So. Goodness. Um, so oh, Easter, heretic. Super Bowl, like I think predominantly our listeners yeah. w- would know. Painting broad brush, of course, not making assumptions, but East, Easter is the holiday for the church. Yeah. And I would say for me personally, it's I would place it above Christmas. Like you don't have Easter I if, would agree. if you don't have Christmas, but at the same time, a birth mm-hmm. doesn't supersede the death and resurrection. There's more text about the death of Jesus than the birth of Jesus. Yes. So just like let the text speak for itself. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a big holiday. It's one where uh, in the church world are priesters, those yeah. that, that come out once or twice, maybe a few times a year. It's always going to be around the big holidays. And so it's an opportunity for us to, uh, the the language that Z, our middle school director, and I, when we do online, have, yeah. been, have been promoting or saying is it's an opportunity to invite our community um, to experience the hope and the peace yeah. of Christ. And I had one person and I thought this was a great compliment. And if, when, when you first hear it, you're like, how's that a compliment? She said, I forgot that it was an Easter service. Cause think about it. Yep. How many churches and like, you know, not knocking on you, yep. but how many churches roll out the red carpet yep. for Easter? Now we did some extra special things like that, but you know, there, there, there yeah. wasn't that, much we we ran it pretty solid if they come back next week the only difference is we're not running five services we're not running five and it's not it's not matthew we're just going back back to to genesis Genesis. yeah like the flow of service the elements of service the songs 
no, those are all songs that we do. That's not like the, oh, you only sing this song on Easter. You know, like we do on Christmas. You know, we're it's like, not like they got you at the hook, line, and sinker, yes. and then you come back and it's like, this is a completely different. Yeah, church. where's all the pyro? Yeah. Where, where, why did what's you know? And so we were. I think the extra things that we did were more about trying to either a create space or two um, because we had to do. We were doing five services. Not we had to. We chose to do five services, and we're thankful for it. Um, so many team members that served like mm-hmm. all day having the hospitality tent. Yeah, when and you start a service like at a... six thirty, don't <laughs> ask your volunteer team to co- eat breakfast before. Yeah. Yeah. Swing by Mickey D's. No, no. Yeah. Max no. Steakhouse is what we've been calling mm, it. Yes, that new restaurant. <laughs> Max Steakhouse. <laughs> With the golden arches. Um, so here is a question that I have for you because Uh-oh. it is an abnormal, Very like nice. how do we break down Easter? Because we've been doing that with Genesis. It is a little bit different. Are you going to give me the Easter versus resurrection Sunday question? No. Okay. Cause good. I'm so Thank sick you. of seeing that on the <laughs> church creatives page and the fighting and bickering that went on. I mean, the church I came from, like we, it was pretty, I'd say it's pretty adamant. Like really hey, it's resurrection. It's resurrection. I, I Which, saw when you go to the mall, with three little girls, and you're shopping for Easter dresses, Resurrection Sunday dresses. Nope, Easter They're like, dresses. You want the goth ones covered yeah. in blood? You <laughs> Do know, you guys like, carry? You walk in. I could see walking into like Old Navy. Do you yeah. guys carry a Resurrection dresses? Yeah. What? Yeah. For, no, for, it's Easter. For, what's going on? Yeah. So, no, so I've been seeing that too. So I was curious. One of one of the things that I have been asking myself in the last forty eight hours now. Oh, okay. Um. So we one of the extra special abnormal things that we did was we did because we know everybody's going to take photos. We made a photo Easter wall. photo yeah. wall backdrop, which was a massive hit. Massive. Hit. It was awesome. There was a line for it. So cool to see those all over social media. It was. It was cool to see. But then here's where my brain went to. Uh oh. All of the Easter post. Again, painting broad brush. Broad brush. Happy Easter. He is risen. Like Risen indeed. All, all of that. How do we live oh, outside Resurrection Sunday like the tomb is empty? I'd flip it the other way. Why do we only live like okay. he's out of the tomb on Easter? Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like why? Now, obviously, we're not going to have a happy Easter photo wall every Sunday. I'm, I, I was going to ask not? you if we could. Like, let's like, just why, put let's Easter 2024 <laughs> all the time. I mean, hey, we had we had uh, extra breakfast and stuff like that here on Sunday. So I'm yeah. like, I'm down for that. And, it, you know, so, yeah, how do we live? That's what I like for, for me personally. But then because of my position as a pastor, as a leader, mm-hmm. like and I I appreciate one of the things that I the production tech part of me has been wrestling with is I think there is. There is a time and place for those elements, but not in the sense of the only time we pull those things out is to six flags over Jesus, oh, Christmas yeah. and that's Easter. Good. And then they come back and it's like, that's not even the guy that preached last week. Yeah. Or you only did three songs instead of seven. And where's the pyro and the yeah. thing that fell out of the sky? And like, this is boring, you know, yeah, like, so how do we, and it's a question that has so many answers oh, but yeah. that's what i've been like that's dealing with one. is walking away from easter how many of us are going to walk back into our crazy busy ridiculous lives mm-hmm. where the further away from easter we get the more focused on how bad we are mm-hmm. or how much we don't care about the lord like we just completely yeah. take our eyes off him yeah i i was thinking about this so holy week went for a couple of jogs just to like clear my mind that's sadistic no, exercise is normal, buddy. Paul talks about it. Yeah, yeah. exercise, running for enjoyment. I said jog, and who said I enjoy it? <laughs> there's that's nobody that's, that's enjoying that's that. Fair. Me, the person watching me jog, <laughs> there's nobody. I drove that's past you running that. one day on the highway, and I like, I was like, I feel bad for him. Next time, just swerve and hit me. <laughs> just take me out of my misery. Right. I, I thought about honking, just, but where you were, I was afraid that if I did scare you, it, that you'd have. Like I mean, I've already been hit traffic. once, so just come on, bring it on. <laughs> so I was out on a run, and one of the things I was thinking about was start re- start reading through the book of Acts. Okay. Right? And because of the resurrection, because of who Jesus is, who he says he is, did what he said he did, like everything, that, because of all of that, like why, why just because we're 2,000 years later 
why do we feel like that gives us, and I don't want to say the right, but like just because we're 2000 years later doesn't mean we should have any less passion mm -hmm. for Christ. And so we, we look and we see, you know, what Peter did on the day of Pentecost. We see Paul's ministry. We see all of these things. And it's like, why, why just because, you know, because we ask those questions, like, why don't we see miracles anymore? Why don't we this? Why? And it's like, why is it so different? And I wonder at times, and this is the thought that hit me as well. Like, I wonder if, if God is asking us the same question. Why mm. is it so different, guys? Like, mm -hmm. nothing has changed. He's up from the grave, and we're awaiting his return, and and the Holy Spirit is being poured out mm -hmm. uh, in and through the church. Why why does church uh, 2,000 years later look mm -hmm. the church, not church service, mm -hmm. why does the church look different? And why aren't we seeing the same things that we see in the book of Acts? Like, why why is that? Oh, you know, and so I feel like kind of like that whole question, like, God, why don't you do something about this? And he's like, I did. I said, you know, I, I created you. Yep. Why don't you do something about that? So in the same way, I wonder if like we look and think like, why is it so different than when we read Acts and we feel this massive gap between what the church was and what it is or who Christians were and who they are now? It's like, why is there such a gap between it? And I just wonder if God's asking us the same thing, like just because we're 2000 years later, 2000 years later, doesn't give us whatever the right the to allow the zeal and the passion mm -hmm. for the Lord to cool. Yep. If anything. Mm -hmm. It should go up because we know that that day is drawing near, yeah. not that that day is further away. So going back maybe even full circle and didn't even mean to do it, are we counting down okay, guy, or are we I counting up there. the days that we have I left? See what, there. see what I did there right there? Didn't even know I was going to do it. And so that's- See the, guys, unplanned. Yeah, it, seriously unplanned. And, and Paul, he would have- like if you if you read Paul's writings and and say like okay from these what would Paul be more focused on what was more near to him the return of Christ or his own death I mean this dude's getting Ooh. beat mm -hmm. shipwrecked stoned you know threatened house arrest and he's like the return of the Lord is more imminent which it is the doctrine of imminence tells us that where it, it, and the same for us why a lot of times we think oh yeah I'll die before the Lord comes back there, there is coming a generation and there is nothing that says that we're not that generation mm -hmm. that says we will not taste death mm -hmm. until we see the Lord's return. Like there's, and so I, I would hope that even though we're 2000 years later, like we need to be counting up to it because, you know, just as uh, our faith and our hope is in his death and resurrection and, and then he ascended. But what's the, like of that, narrative what's the last thing that was said as he ascended into the clouds and they couldn't see him anymore two angels pretty much roll up and look at the disciples and say what are you looking at the sky for mm -hmm. he's going to return the same way so the so the same hope that we have in the resurrection it is tied to mm -hmm. his return you like those are not separate per se events they are linked together yeah. because that's the that's like the last <clears throat> thing that we hear you know, before, and then, then we have Pentecost and yeah. all that. So, Because some of what I wonder, too, and we've talked about this, I think last season, if not going all the way back to season one, and some of it is just, like, for us as a church, are we expecting the Lord yeah. to move and do those sure. things, or have we become numb to it? Like, yep. <clears throat> do I come into Sunday expecting God to do big things? Mm -hmm. And they, they, may, they may be miraculous healings big. Mm -hmm but they could be miraculous, small oh, yeah. things. Like we always assume like, like this massive, audacious display of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when it's not that, anything under wherever that line is that we've drawn isn't miraculous. Yeah. And it's like, it just looks And different. I think we need to understand, like I think there needs to be a redefinition of miraculous. Like, And I'm not talking about the thing that goes Let's against go. mm -hmm. like the laws of nature, like the most miraculous thing of my life is that I had a grandmother and a grandfather that loved me unconditionally. Mm. And, and this so poured themselves out to show me the love of Christ. They never floated. They never walked on water. There was no, 
you know tongues of fire moment yeah there yeah there was there was nothing in, in the sense of a miracle of the new testament or even the old testament that i ever saw uh in and through them but that was never the goal mm-hmm. and that was never the goal of jesus either mm-hmm. the goal was to preach and teach the word the goal was to disciple to love and that was the most miraculous thing that they ever did and so i think i think there needs we need to redefine what does that look like because like going back to easter services do we have you know again broad brush not knocking anybody were we and we could have been guilty of this you know we have to really look at our own hearts were we more expecting us to do big things on Easter Sunday or the Lord to do big things on Easter Sunday? Ooh. And how many churches walk in and think, we're going to do a big thing on Easter? Or it's like, ah, no. Yeah. And it's like, how many times did we, as humans mm-hmm. of the church, get in the way where, you know, so- sometimes in those just normal, you know, the seventh inning stretch of the year of church service where, you know, we're in the middle of like, we're in the middle of Revelation, we're in the middle of Genesis, we're going to be in the, oh man, he's going to read through the genealogies, like how is like, that's when God will show up mm-hmm. and do a miraculous work. Not when we put all our human effort on there, yep. but when we just like, hey, we're just going to leave it all on to the Lord. Yeah. But how many times do we walk in and think, all right, we're going to do a big thing. And the whole time the Lord's like, circuses, circuses, man, you're just entertaining them. So. The elephants still poop. <laughs> <laughs> and it still stands. The show is great, but <laughs> they're still behind the scenes. For sure, for sure. Um, okay, so Uh-oh. through that lens, here's here's maybe a more practical, maybe not everybody's wondering yeah. that question. I, I think was. that's a great question to all of us to be very reflective and contemplative. How do we continue to live the Easter story, the resurrection story every day, not yeah. just one day? Yeah. Same thing with the birth of Jesus. Same thing with, yeah, all of that. How do we defend the resurrection? Um, how far back you want to go? <laughs> My job here <laughs> is to ask the question. Is to ask the question. <laughs> Your job is to bring the You sit there and answer them, you little monkey. We throw <laughs> Nobody nickels. Nobody wants to know my level of knowledge. We throw we know nickels it. at you and you <laughs> dance for us. It's the circus. Come on. You are the jukebox of theology. We go, we put the quarter A7. in. We, yes. <laughs> okay. So the resurrection. All shooting from the hip. Right? Because I, okay, and here's why. Yeah. I, at least in one of the services, I don't know, it, it's all a blur. Mm-hmm. Um, I closed one of the services. I think it was the last one. I didn't get to one. see any of these because I tried to get out. You tried so to get I out. Could, yeah. I think the last one. What'd you say? I prayed to close. Yeah. Um, Because I knew we had the time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. just like, hey, whatever. And I prayed Something to the effect of, um, while every other world religion's God is laying in a tomb, Ooh. your tomb is empty. Yes. And so, how, how do, do you de- like? That? Yeah, how do yeah. you defend that the tomb is empty when even within Christianity, let's roll back. Yeah. Um, we don't necessarily even agree to the tomb that Jesus is buried in. Yeah, that's because so we have the right. garden tomb. We have the garden tomb, and then we have the tomb, the the tomb in the church of the sepulcher. Ooh, Se- look at Se- him! He got it. The church of the holy sepulcher. Yeah, Thank you, I forgot holy church of the holy sepulcher, where there there is not massive debate, but there's a good there's debate a good, going on yeah. as to who, it, was Jesus really buried yeah. in the garden tomb? Was he not? Yeah, and that's where um, not sorry, not to rabbit trail, but yeah, just, Josh McDowell, Titus Kennedy, um, those those guys, I lean that I'd be in the same camp with them talking Church of the Holy Sepulchre. But that's a great point. Like, how do we know the tomb is empty when we can't even really mm-hmm. agree on that? So so we have to frame it to understand what we're talking about. Let's go. So it's the same way when people say, Jesus never said, I am God. Like, show me the verse where Jesus says, I am God. And mm. it's like, y- you are right. He never said that. Do you know why? Because he spoke Aramaic. Mm-hmm. And the New Testament was written in Greek. And you're asking for an English, I am God. Now, if you look at the culture of the of the Jewish people, if you look at the foundation of Judaism, and you understand, so even going with Yahweh mm-hmm. and how Jesus did show, I am Yahweh of the Old mm-hmm. Testament. And even that statement right there, I am, before Abraham, I am, you know, 
where if we're trying to use it as like, here is my criteria, he has to meet that before I believe, yeah. like that's always gonna, that's, the, that, that's just not a good argument to do, right? And so what we have to look at is uh, allow the lines of evidence, mm -hmm. almost like, because we're, we're 2,000 years later, right? We do not have a living eyewitness to the resurrection of Jesus. Oh, darn, I thought we did. Yeah. Nor do we have a living eyewitness of the American Revolution mm -hmm. or of the Civil War or of any of these other historical events. But what do we have? And, and if we put it on the same bar, the same mm -hmm. level of any other historical event, you know, we have to allow all these lines of evidence. And I think the problem when you get in the conversations about anything of Jesus or God is everybody says that they want that one line of evidence that is just so clear that it can't be refuted and nobody can push back. And yes, you have to believe. Well, like the miraculous line, like going back to like, yeah. it has to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, and, and you can't do that because, um, I think God has revealed himself enough for us to know him but not so much that it forfeits our free will. Yeah, because then you take if, faith out of the question. Yeah, then you take faith out of the question. Because then why wouldn't you believe yeah. in God? Yeah, we're not saved by grace through evidence. We're not saved by grace through um, him tearing open the sky, saying, here I am, bow down to me. Like that would, for, it, we're saved by grace through faith in him. It would him. be easier sometimes, yeah, if I'm it would being be. honest. No, uh, <laughs> but it wouldn't be faith anymore. Yeah. And it wouldn't be, and that's how we designed it. And so, and why that's key, uh, there's a verse in Hebrews 11, um, you know, where we get the definition of faith. So now faith is the assurance or reality of things hoped for, right? Not hope like, oh, I hope it doesn't rain tonight, but like biblical hope, the conviction or the proof of things not seen. So do we have faith in the reality of things hoped for, that Jesus rose from the grave, that he is returning? Is there the proof of things not seen? You know, can is, is there proof for that? And that's where we have to, so there's many lines of evidence. And I think um, guys like Jay Warner Wallace, um, he was a forensic detective um, that got saved and uses the same science of forensicness. <laughs> forensic, what is that called? You know what I'm talking about? He's this. No. Uh, you have no idea. Like a forensic detective that's like, he's going to be the one that's going to look at like a crime scene and using. There's another word. Forensic I'm, science. Yeah, uh, forensic science, but I know that's not it. But you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. He's going to Google it. Anyway, so like a Jay Warner Wallace, he he's using that kind of same thing where let's look at all the evidence like a, a crime scene. Is there enough evidence to prove Jesus guilty that he rose from the grave and walked out and he was resurrected? Right? That feels weird to even say that proved Jesus guilty. Yeah. But we're talking about the resurrection. Like that's the, just like is, like if most murders are not eyewitnessed, but is there enough evidence at the scene and different things and corroborating evidence and testimony? Is there eyewitness testimony? Is that reliable eyewitness testimony? Is there enough there to find that person guilty? Mm -hmm. We have to do the same thing. So. Any, any one line of evidence, any one line has uh, pushback. Yeah. People are, oh, I don't believe that because of this, 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 or whatever. It's like, okay, I get that. But when you start stacking enough of it, it's like, okay, at what point is there, and that's what, um, you know, Frank Turek, Norman Geisler, they wrote the book, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. Yep. Like, at some point, I don't have enough faith to believe that the resurrection didn't happen because the evidence for it is mm -hmm. so much. And so... Um, and, and there's other things that come into play too. Long answer. I'm so sorry. Um, so I think one key thing, and let's start with scripture is, is the new Testament a reliable, historically accurate mm -hmm. book, you know, it, or is it, yeah, there's a lot of things in question about it. Um, and no matter how you slice it, the, the, Heris, historicity, the authenticity of scripture, like there, there is profound evidence for yeah. that. And I think we're far enough removed where that is becoming less of an issue. Yeah. 
you know, where I think there was a time where that was the first thing you questioned was like, well, how do we know this is authentic? How do we know? Like, we're far enough removed where, and we've talked, like you've talked about before, it's always fun when you start bringing atheists in. They're like, oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. That we can authenticate that. That's real. That's evidence. Now, Jesus or God, that's a whole different conversation, but we know that those books that's real. Yeah. And so you look at the the number of manuscripts that we have, the reliability of the manuscripts, we have even where they were dug up. Like if you take the top 10 ancient manuscripts that we have and and you just combine number 2 to 10 and added those together, the New Testament, which is the number 1, still has far more than others. And so you you so you could do some pre-work of saying showing that the New Testament is a very historical reliable document. And so now we say, okay, so what was written in it? Well, the resurrection of Jesus. And there's a lot of, there's internal evidences and then there's external evidences for that. So when, and a lot of atheists or critical scholars, as I politely try to say, is they're like, oh, well, uh, there was a bias to the, to the gospel writers. Show me a writer that's not biased. And the amount of writers that we have. Exactly. The, the theme or the thread stays. Yeah. And even if there is any perceived contradictions that are pointed out, so like we're talking about the resurrection, was there one angel or two? Well, one gospel tells us that there was two, one gospel tells us there was one. But the one just said that one angel spoke. But in order to have two angels, you at least need to have one. Mm -hmm. So did one gospel writer just record that one angel spoke, and so that's that was their focus. So it, but none of it changes like, oh yeah, so he didn't rise out of the grave. And so there's a lot of internal evidence, but when you're talking to somebody that doesn't even hold to the word of God, yeah, you know, so that's where you could try to defend the, the reliability of the scriptures. And then you could talk about internal evidence. Now, the nice thing is, do we have any external evidence of the life of Jesus? And there's 10 ancient documents, um, ancient historian writers that we know and have, and you put them together, guys like a Josephus mm-hmm. and Tech. Tacticus, I believe is their name. There is, there's enough ancient writings, and some of these guys had no axe to grind whatsoever for Christianity. So if anything, their bias was opposite, and you can put the a timeline of the life, death, resurrection, uh, and the disciples, you could, is congruent with the New Testament. So you even have um, extra biblical Authors, like extra the ancient Bib- Near East text. Yeah, ancient Near East text that is defending, um, you know, the life, death, resurrection of Jesus. Um, for me, I think one of the greatest places to start is actually the opposite. Look at the other theories for the empty tomb, mm-hmm. and and they start in Scripture. The very first theory to try to explain the empty tomb, because there's no theory that says the tomb's not empty. Mm-hmm. That's clue number one for me. Nobody's saying... There's no contradiction in the sense of like, these three say, yes, it is. These two say, no, it's not. Yeah. They all say it's empty. They all say it's empty. What we're trying to explain... What how is it empty? Or how, why? Yeah. Yes, why and how is it empty? And so I think that's clue number one. Huh, I've never thought about that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. The, so nobody's saying, oh, that seems not empty. It's full of, full of them right there. There he is. You want to see him? I got his name tag right there on his bones. Like, <laughs> everybody says the tomb is empty. So on, the only... Other theories are we're trying to explain mm-hmm. how and why. Your top three, and the and the first one that we see is given in Scripture. So even the Pharisees and the Jews at the time knew we have to explain the empty tomb. Mm-hmm. Oh, his disciples stole the body. Stole the body, because and and when did they say that? I have no idea. They said it before the tomb was empty, not after the tomb was empty. That's why they asked the guards to guard the tomb they caught on quicker than the disciples. They said, hey, we know this scoundrel or whatever word they used. We know he said he was going to rise in three days. So, put so they'll some, make it look like he did. Yeah, so yeah, so we're, that's the best explanation that they had that the tomb is going to be empty. Oh, the disciples are going to take the body then. So would you mm-hmm. guard it to keep that from happening? And they did, and it still happened. Why? Because it's a miraculous event. And so the first it, one is the stolen body one. And I think that's, if, if I was going to stack, what is the, what's the best explanation um, that the critical scholars would have for the empty tomb? I would say mm-hmm. is the stolen body one. Mm-hmm. The other two I think are stupid. Okay. Sorry, love you, mean it. 
No, yeah. they're stupid. Best one you got is the stolen body. But let's talk about that. So, and here's the kicker. This happened not just like in a big city. Mm-hmm. Like this is city center, not just of Israel, but like these were trade routes. Mm-hmm. You had thousands upon hundreds of thousands of people coming to Jerusalem at Passover. Mm-hmm. Like at the Road to Resurrection, we talked about how every family mm-hmm family and these were some big families back in the day you know what i mean not just mom dad kids it, yeah but full, full family. Yep. yeah and and they would all need to bring a sacrifice sacrificial lamb at passover just a few couple of years later after uh they 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 we found a census that they killed two hundred and fifty six thousand lambs on passover so that means at least two hundred and fifty six thousand families were in jerusalem for Passover. That's the kind of numbers that was happening. Mm-hmm. So this wasn't in small little Kaiser, Missouri, mm-hmm. you know, that's with un- 200,000 people. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. With four people and, and half of them are the dog, you yep. know, like some unincorporated town. Like this was big city, big center of everything. Cause think the, the look at the title that Pilate put on the cross of Jesus. He wrote it in three languages. Why? Cause there were so many people because there were so many people are here. So we think about the death and the resurrection of Jesus is this like mystical away. No, this was Quiet, done. Hush, hush. Yeah, this was done in like like Times Square, New York City. This was done in LA. This was done like for us here in Missouri, like this was in St. Louis, Kansas City type thing. This wasn't in small, you know, little Savannah, Missouri, yep. where I went to high school, right? So, so that's key to understand what's happening. And so, stolen body, here's the theory. And then, where was the center uh, for the church? Right here. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't like, oh, this all happened here, and now we're going to plant the, the start, the headquarters of the church is going to be hundreds of, no, this was in backyard of where it was all at. Mm-hmm. And so, the disciples, they they are the ones accused of stealing the body of Jesus, and that's how they explain it. So they knowingly steal the body. That's key. Mm-hmm. Not one of them is looking at themselves saying, like, wow, he really rose from the grave. No, they're all looking at each other like, we did this. We did this. And the greatest explanation I've heard recently of why people, this one guy said, this is why I believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Watergate. Have you seen this real? Oh, there was a guy yes. who was a part of the Watergate, he, the whole water, Watergate scandal with uh, somebody talks about not like one President of them would have broke. Yes. Not he one goes, of them could have kept their mouth you shut You looked that at long. the 12 disciples because we know uh, Judas was replaced with Matthias who would have been involved in it. Right. Um, you have at least 12 men, which we know there was more disciples of Jesus. We just mm-hmm. have the 12 apostles. You have these 12 men that steal the body. They make up the story. They all scatter preaching the same story that they made up Mm -hmm. and not one of them breaks under extreme persecution and martyrdom. But then you go to Watergate 12, like I think it's within like three days they start rolling over on each other. I know super quick. And this is like the top of our government or whatever. I thought that was kind of funny. So, but you have, so you have the 12, let's go down the theory that they steal the body. They hide the body. It's never found. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And then, then they look at their lives though. What did name one disciple that gained from the story? Nobody. Of the res- if it's the resurrection's fake, who get nobody? They all were beaten, martyred, and crucified. Outside, not maybe crucified, but they were killed. Yep. They were martyred um, outside of John. And uh, John is the only one that died of old age. But he was greatly persecuted. Like at some point they tried to martyr him. They tried to martyr him. And like, think of Peter. Peter was crucified upside down because he did not find himself worthy to be crucified in the same manner of his Lord. You don't do that if you know, if you've built a story on lies. History, not scripture. History would tell us that they killed his wife right before it. Look at your wife and say, I'm done. Because, hey, I know we stole that body that night. And I have to, like, what do they have to gain? If they knew they stole the body, there is no hope in a resurrection. Why would you allow your wife to be crucified? Why would then you allow yourself to be crucified? 
Then you ring in Paul, who is critical scholars would say he is the most trouble of the whole resurrection story because his change of life being completely against, he was a persecutor of the Mm -hmm. church and now he's the leader of the church. Why the resurrection of Jesus? He appeared to Paul. And so Paul and James are the two big ones because we know before the resurrection, they hated Mm -hmm. Jesus in the sense they did not believe in him. But then Paul and James after are now leaders in the early church. And it was after the death of Jesus. So if if Jesus just died, there's no resurrection, yeah. explain Peter and James. And again, where did this take place? In their freaking backyard of where this all went down. And so why would why would you die knowingly for a lie? Because at that point, the gig's up. The, the moment they're going to crucify my wife and me for the lie that I've been living. And go on living your life. All right, it was all a farce. Yeah. I, I, I have my family. I'm going to go on living my life. I mean, think of all the pyramid schemes where they're embezzling money. The moment they got, yeah, you're right. I was lying the whole time. Mm-hmm. Because and we, men, this the the, un, the, uh, the study of the sociology of men, this the study of humanity, we roll over for so much less when we're living a lie. Like mm-hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, the moment we get caught. You know, catch me if you can. Like, yeah. we're, we're, we roll over. And so the idea that they would go to horrible, gruesome deaths, and not even just them, now they're followers. Like, Polycarp was a follower of, he was a disciple of John, you know. And like, you have not just the apostles, but early church fathers that were killed, persecuted for their faith. Like, because at what point, like, would John just look at Polycarp and be like, hey, between me and you, like we stole the body and I know where it's at. So like the the best idea is the stolen body one and it just doesn't hold weight. And I think just looking at the lives of the disciples, the best a critical scholar could say is we know this, at least the early disciples of Jesus, not just the apostles, mm-hmm. but the disciples, they believed they saw the risen Jesus. Okay. That's, that's the best they can say. They at least believed that they saw the risen Jesus. Because they still got to get a little bit of doubt in yeah. there. It's like, it was almost a grasping of straws. So you have the stolen body. Then you have the swoon theory that he just passed out on the cross, right? Mm-hmm. And then once Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus got him, you know, they hit him with a little Gatorade, maybe gave him a Red Bull, <laughs> revived him. And then that's, the, that's how the tomb's empty. The problem, then Jesus is still human and he died again. And so if, if I knew that mm-hmm. and you're just, why would, again, the disciples dying, yep. like it doesn't explain their radical transformation because we're not, and that's the other part. We go from the gospels to acts and we think it's a long period of time, like the old Testament yeah. to the new yeah, Testament. Yeah. We're talking 40 days later, you got scared little Peter running with his tail between his legs, wetting himself mm-hmm. all over the place to 40 days later, he's preaching 3,000 people come to faith. The Jews are persecuting him. He's pretty much giving them the bird saying, you can't do anything. Yeah. Like, oh, I found myself worthy that you're going to beat me yeah. for my faith. Bring it on. What? Yeah. How did you go from a chicken to just a roaring lion in a matter of 40 days? Like, whatever boot camp you went to, you know. They would with, love to know. Oh, they... my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and the best explanation we have is, oh, they... Um, the evidence or whatever it would be. I forget the wording that they use. It's like, oh, they've been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's like, dang, that's Mm. cool. So you have the stolen body, then you have the swoon theory. The swoon theory doesn't make any sense because Rome, even though they did not invent crucifixion, they mastered it. it, Mastered it. They perfected it. And if a Roman soldier didn't do his job, he was killed for it, flat out. And so for Pilate to order... the crucifixion of Jesus and him not die and him not die. And it was on a very public again. It wasn't like just three guards and Jesus. Like it it was all very open and everything. If they wouldn't have done their job, they would have been killed. And correct me if I'm wrong. If it's been a long time since I've taken history of Christianity. No, it's good. Um, the Roman perfection of, of crucifixion was a celebrated spectacle. Oh yeah. This was like, that's this was how, the Olympics and the like this was something you brought your family out to watch. This this was a this was a spectacle that this wasn't like you said tucked away in a corner. This was something that people were very aware of. And it's how they kept control. 
It was done in a public way so that when you were walking in, Jesus would have walked past many of people hanging on crosses, knowing that one day that was going to be him. They, mm. they crucified you in a very public way to say that if you step out of line in Roman law, that's what's going to happen to you. Oh, you're just going to hang me on the cross and then I get taken down and hit some Gatorade. I'm going to be fine in a couple days. No. And, and, uh, there's a great study, a medical examiner, like, uh, you know, when somebody dies and a uh, corner corner, something like that. Yeah. Um, he did, a, he did like, Hey, let's just take the gospels and all the little details that we have from it. Um, he, so he does a great study talking about all of that. And that's where, you know, like the nails hitting up against the radial mm-hmm. nerve and the pain that would have happened and all of that. He goes, absolutely. Jesus was dead on the cross. And for me, again, uh, the science wasn't quite there as it was today. Mm-hmm. And they just wrote what they saw. And so when the spear hits the side of Jesus, what comes out blood and water. Well, and you talked about this on Sunday. Yeah, so when blood stops pumping, it coagulates and it separates. And it looks like water. It's clear. I've, I've seen that. I've drawn blood off people. And you see it in the tube. And sometimes that's why they'll, you'll see them shake it up because they're, mi- they're mixing it back together. Interesting. Right? And so it separates out that. So when his body stopped, his heart stopped beating, and his blood just stopped, there was a separation in that. And And... I mean, you take a spearhead, you know, 18 inches long to your side, it's poking your mm-hmm. heart and the, the sack that your heart's sitting in, which he was probably already in hypovolemic shock because he bled so much from his flogging that water would have started like filling, fluid would have started filling around his heart like that. And that's what, I mean, it's just crazy. So, and yeah, there, you, you, there is n- no other account whatsoever of another person surviving a Roman cross. There is, mm. there is, so e, so if that's true, that's that's the miraculous event. <laughs> but there's no, the yeah, that's a massive, especially, yeah. So, and then the last one is um, the hallucination theory or the vision theory, and they would say that all of the disciples just hallucinated that Jesus the same resurrected. Dream yeah, or the same. yeah. But then the problem with that is, it doesn't explain the empty tomb. Because a mm. hallucination is not rooted in reality. You can't have a hallucination that makes the tomb empty. Because someone's going to say, well, you can say the tomb's empty, yeah. but we have the body. Or we, yeah, exactly. the guards move, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then the other thing with hallucinations, there is there is no record in human history of mass hallucinations of the same thing. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Eat what the drug? mushrooms, let's go. <laughs> but for, and that's the thing, we only think of the 11, 12 apostles, like we know about 120 were following Jesus. Like there was a, there was a pretty good group following Jesus at this point. He just picked the 12 as his apostles and that was his inner, inner circle. But we know others. So you, you would have to have, you know, and again, scripture says that he appeared to over 500 people. Mm-hmm. And that's that New Testament creed that we can date to two to four years. And like how did 500 people hallucinate at the same time of the same event mm. and willing to die for that hallucination? Like you can talk to somebody, the, some of those wild childs of the seventies that dropped acid and LSD and hallucinated. Are you willing to die for that hallucination that you saw? No, not at all. Mm. The only other one is some people will talk about a, the wrong tomb. Oh, Mary just went to the wrong tomb. And that's so they rolled up, and it was the it was the wrong one. Again, that's you're you're grasping for straws mm-hmm. at that point. Like that was a very public event and spectacle that would not have been. Uh, oh yeah, I just took a left, and I was supposed to take a right. Like <laughs> no, not at all. And so I always look at the lives of the disciples, and you look at other theories of what it is, and and at one point you just have to ask yourself, like, okay. What's going on here? Is is there some truth to it? Mm-hmm. And those are just that's me just shooting from the hip. Just the life of the disciples, you know, the his the reliability of the New Testament and what it says mm-hmm. and all its details, and then the lack of any good explanation outside of that. Like when I think I think the disciples saw the risen Jesus and they were willing to die for it, you know, and we have extra biblical like it's Kind of pretty good, yeah. pretty good evidence here, and that's just. Um, I think I shared in one of my apologetics classes that we did, you know, mm-hmm. last fall or yeah. whatever. Like, there's, I have, I think it's nine lines of evidence. 
for the resurrection of Jesus. And so I'm just pulling a few of those. But when you when you walk through it all, it's this is just crazy. But anyway, so that's how I would defend it. Just shooting off from yeah, the hip. you know, no big deal. Yeah, just, just, just what I had just in my back pressing pocket. Pressing the jukebox of theology <laughs> information. A7, A7. Um, those are the only two questions I had. That's it. That was it. We didn't get any on the uh, the old uh, the old. Uh... Oh, we got one. Do you want Do you want to dive into that question? Let's dive into it. I thought this was good. You ready for this? We're in almost an hour in. You're gonna die. All right, here we go. Almost. I can do it in eight minutes. <laughs> the greatest lie up. a pastor ever said. Me, yeah, eight minutes. Times As I'm 10. wrapping up here, do you want me to read the whole question? Read the whole okay. unadulterated so L question. We had a question come in uh, actually this morning, uh, and I'm going to read you verbatim the question, and then we'll stick some coins in the jukebox of theology and <laughs> get an I answer from this. it. Um, so question goes, question for the breakdown. Just wondering what your thoughts were regarding the Biden administration's declaration of Easter being Trans Visibility Day and how we should respond. <laughs> also, uh, oh, do you want to do more. that first? Yeah, let's do okay, that. Okay, let's do that first, and then okay, you do that first, um, and then there's a, a follow up question. Kind of, there's another question afterwards, so we'll we'll digest that question. So, first part of the question: Just wondering what your thoughts were regarding uh, the Biden White House declaration of Easter being Trans uh, Visibility Day and how we should respond. Let's yeah, let's dive into that. Okay, so. You, you got to say things openly, okay? Okay. All right. We, as the church, uh-huh. live under completely different values than our world. The world, lost, broken, living in their sin, living in their depravity, one of the things that we know <laughs> that we live under a different value system when we are not citizens of this world but a citizenship of heaven um, is that sin Mm -hmm. will be celebrated Mm -hmm. instead of, I don't want to say condemned, but there's not a proper view of sin Mm -hmm. (laughs) from our world. It's celebrated instead. It's platformed. It's platformed. Same thing with abortion. Same thing at all those things. And it's like, so like I, I am not shocked at Rome being Rome. Mm -hmm. I think that's a key thing that we as Christians lose. I can't believe that. Did, did, any of us vote for Biden because we thought he was a strong Christian that was going to lead our country with Christian values and morals mm-hmm. that are flowing from his personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. I don't know him personally. Yeah. And I never got asked to come to the white house and have spiritual conversations with him. And we could say, but white house, if you're listening, give me a call. I would, you know, <laughs> I never been to out. DC. I would love to, <laughs> You know, never been to the White House. That, so, yeah, that is that is. Um, so we as Christians need to get over the idea of like oh, Rome's being Rome. What are we going to do? Rome's always been Rome. Babylon's always been Babylon. I mean, if you look at the governmental structure and the oppression that Rome was bringing during the ministry and the life of Jesus, we got a cakewalk mm-hmm. compared to that. I mean, the atrocities and the the sexual perversion and immorality that was happening in the Roman empire. Come on. Mm -hmm. You know, like do we really think we're the first generation to deal with some of this? Right. So there's that there's point. Number one, I'll make right there. Don't be afraid of Rome being Rome. Number two, that's, that's always been March 31st has always, I I don't know the exact starting of it, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't this year has been a day that's been recognized of, um, the trans community, to acknowledge that this was just the declaration. This was the just the declaration of it. Yep. of it. So it's always been the 31st. Now we do have to ask, is there a coincidence that Easter did it? Yeah. This when year it fell Easter, on mm-hmm. Easter that this is the white house administration, that it, Biden, this is when the, we first wanted yep. to acknowledge it. Then there's something there, but it, I think some people are mistaken that they think it never existed. Mm-hmm. It's always been the last day of March. And remember, Easter's going to change. That's Easter a fluid changes. date. Yes. So everybody went Easter, and it's like Easter yeah. this year yeah. yeah, of 2024. Yeah. It just happened to coincide. And that's the other part. Like, oh, they did it on Easter. Like, Jesus didn't rise on this date. And so my sources tell me that it started in 09 when it was first, like, uh, articulated 
Okay. That, hey, we're going to acknowledge the trans community on the 31st. To which I will say they are humans. Mm-hmm. We need to quit thinking that they're half-breeds, that they're less than. These are humans created in the image of God just as we are, and they're living in sin and brokenness just like we are. Mm -hmm. Their sin and brokenness just looks different than ours. Yep, That's all it is. But that has been going since 2009, and it just this year, the White House acknowledged it and made it kind of a, I don't even want to call it a national holiday because holidays where you get the word holy. It, yep. it comes from holy day. And so not really a holy day, but within our culture in our country they acknowledge it mm -hmm. at that point now easter is fluid Th that's more pagan <laughs> than like why don't we just celebrate it like we do easter or christmas mm -hmm. on the exact day that it happened because we know when that was mm -hmm. but it, it's fluid and that actually comes from it has to be the first sunday after the new moon of the spring equinox or of something like that and the rising sun <laughs> the phoenix and the rising sun <laughs> and the house of the rising sun <laughs> by the animals and the animal kingdom no it's like the seven degrees of kevin bacon <laughs> of easter <laughs> oh yes so 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 there's that it, it you could chalk it up it's coincidence but also we just have to understand like christianity has always been oppressed in our mm -hmm. world why why now are all of a sudden we thinking this is a this is a an attack that's new and un mm -hmm. the enemy has always been against the plan of god mm -hmm. i think that's one of the key issues spiritually of world war 2 because god has always had a plan for the jews that's but the holocaust world war 2 is not the first time the jews ever been like severely mm -hmm. afflicted and persecuted and killed like but why why the jews over any other you know because they're God's chosen people and that he has a plan for them. And anywhere God's will is and he has a plan, the enemy's gonna try to disrupt that. And so even as we celebrate and, and the day commemorates the resurrection of Jesus, well, yeah, the enemy's gonna try to bring any kind of distraction to it. Um, this probably could get fact-checked and I would love to know that, so I'm not 100% sure, but, um, so, you know, Biden on whatever social media platforms, like when it was uh, Hanukkah, mm -hmm. hey, lighten the menorah as, you know, just want to recognize our brother mm -hmm. Jewish faith, right? And then Kwanzaa, same thing. Ramadan, same thing. But then on Easter, let it be a Christian religion or Christian holiday. That's when we make trans visibility day. It's like, but there was nothing ever said like, hey, thinking of our Christian brothers and sisters of America as they celebrate their risen Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Like, he could say that. Just as, like, I don't think he's Muslim, but he acknowledged that there are Americans uh, in our country that are Muslim and they're celebrating Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Or Jewish people celebrating Hanukkah, or I don't know what Kwanzaa is, but I won't go there. Um, I I think it's more of a, a, what I have heard, it's more of a race. Mm. than it is more of a religion. Okay. But um, and but there's, but there's like what would have kept Biden just from saying like, hey, we know that there are uh, Christians who are Americans that love their country and they're celebrating their risen Lord and Savior. And so we recognize that just as we're going to, because if we do have that freedom of religion and he wants to acknowledge all the other ones, then why are we different? Same reason why, uh, so let's go with the, ISIS and all of them that want to attack us and I hate America because they believe we are a Christian nation. They don't like the, the, the lack of morality that's coming out of our country. And, and I can understand that to a degree. Like, oh, you say you're Christian. Oh, well, we have a massive porn industry. You know, look at our music and our television. Look at our culture. And it's like, yeah, I could, I could understand. When you look at the worst parts of our country, I could understand that. Um, but, but why do they attack us when a whole different religion, Hinduism or Buddhism, is just down the street, but overseas they hate us? Well, darkness is never going to fight against darkness. Mm -hmm. Darkness is always going to go against light. And so um, I think we, you know, uh, let's poke the bear. If you are a Christian and a follower of Jesus and you are shaken that a governmental leader did not affirm Christian values, your faith probably isn't in Jesus. 
but it's in the government. Hmm. Why are we so shaken that the world is going to be the world and Rome is going to be Rome and, and, you know, people that do not have it from outward appearances, yep. we judge fruits, we don't judge hearts. You know, wh why are we so shaken by that? So when I wake up and I see that and it's like, okay, not, not surprised, not surprised, you know, I'm, I'm actually shocked that it's not worse to be honest, yeah. you know? But there's there's greater atrocities than I think that. Yeah. Him tweeting that and making that a day. Like the other part that I didn't appreciate was, you know, so my own personal views, yeah, I don't appreciate that. It's not great. I'm not loving that. But I don't want to diminish the humanity of people that consider themselves trans either. You know, I still want to reach out to them in grace and love. And <clears throat> I think instances like this doesn't, it makes it even more difficult for us mm -hmm. to to do that ministry. Um, but the other thing is, uh, like the White House has like a coloring contest for kids, mm -hmm. and they banned uh, anything that was overtly religious or anything with religious overtones. So, really? so a kid couldn't color a cross or an empty grave or anything. Can I color like a really that. wide T? But here's the here's the crazy <laughs> part: the Easter Bunny. And the egg, uh -huh. th those are religious overtones. Those are religious symbols. The pagan holiday in the spring talking about new life, like, <laughs> why do you think it's a rabbit? <laughs> mm. I mean, w we understand that in our joking, maybe a little bit uh, uh, coarse, coarse, reverse, yeah, yeah. coarse jesting of, oh, like rabbits, you know, because because of how hyperactive they because are. They procreate very quickly. Yes, exactly, because of the procreation. <laughs> and eggs, you're like, why do you think it's eggs? Yeah. You know, because it's talking about a spring holiday of new life, but it's it's rooted in paganism. Yeah. You know, but we're okay with that. You know, as long as we don't take down the Christmas tree. Yeah. Oh, you know, like, that's, it. it's all, it's all pagan in that. Those are religious overtones, but it's okay because it's not Christian. Mm. Because again, darkness isn't going to fight, like, again, Satan doesn't care what the counterfeit is. As long as it's not the truth, yeah, he doesn't care, and so, um, so that's I think I don't know, I, I think we need to quit being so shaken about it. Yeah, it's it's very uh, it's jarring for me. Um, I think there is a time and place to have that sort of reaction, yeah, but not when it's placed outside the church, yeah, in in a governmental structure, yeah, where oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Oh, how dare they. Why? They're doing exactly. And even if the government said like, okay, so you know what's happening in Canada, right? No. <laughs> Maybe I do. But Buckle I... up, buttercup. They are trying to pass legislation that would make the Bible hate speech because of the transgender movement. And so even if the government came to me, like instead of COVID, let it be a gender affirming male and female and saying you, you cannot preach that. Like I'm, we're, we're going to Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego this thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even need to answer you in this yeah. either. Yeah. You're going to arrest me or God's going to deliver me. But like, I don't even need to answer you. Yep. Oh, King, like I'm going to preach and I'm in Genesis. Maybe we need a refresher and go back to chapter two. And he created them male and female. Let's roll it back a couple of weeks. Yeah. I, I'll do it again. Like yeah. I'm, we're going to let the word of God be the word of God. And like, you know, we're getting ready to start Sunday. We're going into Genesis three, and we're going to look at the fall. We're going to talk about sin, something the world doesn't want to talk about. But like, even at, even at that, oh, we're going to outlaw the Bible. Okay, why are we shaking? You know how many of our brothers and sisters in Christ gather in secrecy under you know punishment by law for their faith? Yeah. Did did we all of a sudden think that this was never going to be us? So it's happening. It's trying to happen in Canada, and like that's just or. Or we're okay with being Christian as long as it's easy and convenient. No. Dun, dun, dun. And the moment we make it more about the what the government's doing and not about what is the church doing in the world. Hmm. That's I think that's an easy distraction that we have. You know, the moment we want to talk about the government, we want to talk about like because is it is the concern that evil is rising? Or that good men who are righteous mm -hmm. that need to stand a line are, are fading. Mm -hmm. That's 
I mean, a couple people are attributed to this quote, but like the only thing that's needed for evil to win is just for good men to do nothing. Mm -hmm. A couple of people are quoted in saying that. And I think it's a great quote, but I mean, let's, that's why for us, at least at Calvary, like, no, we're going to continue to make kingdom impact and we're going to hold fast, not just to truth. Yes. But also to grace and love Mm -hmm. and mercy. And we're going to love broken people. So, you know, what would you say to somebody that's trans? We have three services. Love, love to get to coffee. Yeah. yeah, we'd love for you to come out. We would love to get coffee sometime. You know, what do you want to do there? I want to listen. I want to ask them their story. I want to see, like, what was it like for them growing up, believing that they were a different gender? How were they treated? Yep. Who was the first person that they exposed that feeling to? How, how did that person respond to them? Who's been the most supportive in their life? Who's been the most hated, like hating them the most for it? Even though I could probably guess who that would be. It's a real easy guess. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know. Because so. people want to belong before they'll believe. But the church, yep. we flipped that and said, we, we need yep. you to believe before we'll allow you to belong. I think it's because we don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to change and transform people's hearts. Well, that's a whole different rabbit trail. <laughs> that's part Is that too flippant to say that quick of, right there? No. You know, like, oh, what, what, what would you do with a trans person that believes that they're a guy or they believe that they're a girl? Uh, show them the scriptures. Oh, yeah, uh, where we're man created, no, 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 where the Holy Spirit changes hearts. Not you. Yeah. We can't change. We can't change anybody. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. And the moment that we think we're going to set them straight, you've already lost. Yep. So what was the second part of the question? Uh, the second part of the question was also. Also. In our physical world, oh, uh, sorry, if our physical world is a mirror reflection of the spiritual world, mm-hmm. what do you think is happening in the spiritual world that is being reflected? You know in those movies where there's going to be like a big fight scene and they want to do like a great secret ambush on them and they allow the enemy to really come in nice and close and they feel like they're just going to easily take over mm-hmm. the area and then all of a sudden... God is patiently enduring the evil of this world. It is rising, but it's not rising out of his control. Mm -hmm. It's rising within his control because um, let's take the the social, especially the social media uh, buzz that's going to be coming up here pretty quick of a boxing match between the champ, America's champ, Mike Tyson, and a social media Facebook dancer, Jake Paul. You could probably tell <laughs> where I'm going to side on this one, but I don't care if he's 57. It's still Iron Mike Tyson. He's Either gonna... way, it's going to be the biggest fight of all time. And if Mike loses, I'm calling it. It was rigged. I'm just calling it. Like, I grew up with pro boxers in my family. Mm-hmm. Like, I've shooken the hand of the man, the first one to knock out Mike Tyson. This dude was a bear of a man. He was huge. Mm. Like, I, I've i been around world-class boxers. Yep. My uncle is a world-class boxer. Like, I am sorry. Mike is going to win this any day of the freaking week, right? Twice on Sunday with the hand tied around his back. Like, he's going to win this. So anyway, but in order for Mike to win the fight, what has to happen? He has to allow Jake in the ring. Mm. for God to take care of evil and destroy it. He has to allow it into the ring. And so there is going to be, and that's how so deceptive I think the enemy is. He's deceiving himself that he actually thinks I have victory. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. He doesn't, because he's not holding to anything truth. He still kills and destroys. He's the father of lies. So he's not like, oh, I know I'm going to be destroyed. No, he really thinks He's going to overthrow the sovereign rule of our father and he's allowing it because then he in one swift swoop of the return of Christ is going to take care of all of it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, what's happening? (laughs) The Lord is allowing the stage to be set for a great and final battle in which he will bring in everlasting righteousness. So I'm not going to be shaken at a government that puts out a tweet that doesn't fit within my Christian values. I'm not going to be shaken if that government tells me I can't preach the word. Now, our church attendance might go down, but maybe it needs to. 
maybe the church does need to be shaken a little, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of pruning right there. You know, and who who's really with me? Kind of like what I said a couple of weeks ago. Like, the Lord intends to put us in harm's way. Step forward. Nobody has to go. I mean, danger is upon us, but why are we shaking in that? When yeah. did the Lord quit being our Lord and Savior? When did he quit being our hope? I mean, it's getting pretty squirrely. It's going to be pretty exciting to yeah. see how it goes down. I mean, I got four wonderful kids that have to grow up in this world. I'm curious what that's going to look like for them, you know, when they're the old people, if we make it that far. But, <laughs> you know, like, but it doesn't, it doesn't negate the fact that Jesus is absolutely in control. Yeah. And he's merely permitting all of this because he knows that one day he's going to take care of all of it. Yep. And hence how we ended Easter. Where is your faith and your trust in Jesus? Mm -hmm. If you're that shaken, not a bad idea to look in the mirror and say, where am I really putting my hope? Yep. So, but that's just me. Some people want to preach it differently and that's perfectly fine. That's on them. But that's just, it you said, what's you. your opinion? Yeah. It said, what's your opinion? There's my opinion. That was Nick's opinion. See, 111. I did that in eight minutes. <laughs> what else you got? Any I got questions? nothing. I, I've got nothing. Oh. I have absolutely nothing after that. Very nice. Well. An hour 11 minutes. I welcome minutes. to the breakdown. So glad that you guys are here. It's a fun ep I like the one-off episodes. I think you do. They're a palate cleanser. Yeah. Shakes it up. And... I think if if we went back over the last three seasons, those one-off episodes. Probably some of the faves. Because we, yeah. and I don't mean this, I don't mean this in a flippant way. Dang. I can't use that word because. Here he goes. But we're He's more, flip, like we're more. You probably. We're more loosey-goosey in what we'll talk about or yeah. what questions we'll answer and things like that. Where we've tried to leave, like I would have never asked that question next week, being in Genesis. Oh, we're talking actually, about, no. That actually would have fit next week. Fit with sin, it would have fit next week in sin. But you know, it, the the one offs where, you know, it's just hey, answer my theological question. Yeah. But so it'll be interesting to see. I like it where this goes. But uh, go. that was hold on, just so I know, uh -oh. I pulled it up earlier. Oh, did you really? Yeah, I had episode, episode three. Eight, episode okay, eight. season three, episode eight. Yep, season three, episode eight. So how far do we go? What What's the standard of? Well, a... at the rate you're going through Genesis, <laughs> will be season three, episode one twenty one. What's wrong with that guy? We're gonna need a lot more palate cleansers built in. We're gonna need a bigger boat. We're gonna <laughs> movie movie. Uh, come on, guy. We're gonna need a bigger I've boat. Heard it, but I don't know. Jaws. Oh. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Yeah. Dun, 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 like dun, dun, still dun, going dun, on. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's just. Anyways, on that note of weirdness and obscurity, hey, thanks so much for listening to episode eight of The Breakdown. A couple of things we ask uh, each and every week or each and every episode uh, that you do that would help us out. One, uh, if you'll rate and review if you're listening on podcast, uh, if you want or like the content, we would love for you to share it with somebody that, that you think it would be impactful or helpful for uh, with. Or to for. stir a good conversation. Yeah, if you're ready for a good, hey, <laughs> invite you over to the dinner table have a conversation um and if you're throwing your plate across the table that's exactly right make sure you use paper plates that night amen um and then if you're watching on youtube uh we'd love for you to hop down in the comments and say hey let us know what you love about the breakdown but other than that we're gonna wrap things up today call it quits uh we'll see you next week for episode nine as we jump back into genesis three right we're starting three genesis next week. three so we'll start genesis three next week but we'll see you guys next week for another episode of the breakdown amen Thank you.